is retirement? What are you going to do when you stop working? What do you mean when I stop working? At some point, after you start a career, you're going to stop it. So what are you going to do when you no longer have a regular paycheck coming in? Look, whatever this career thing is that you're talking about, the end of it is decades away. Retirement is a topic for old people who have fallen and can't get up. No, this is a topic for everyone. We're all going to retire someday, unless something worse happens first. Whoa, that's a bit grisly. Saving for retirement effectively is very complicated. There are a number of different variables at issue. How long we'll be retired for, how much money we're making today, what the cost of living will be when we're retired. All those factors are very difficult to get a handle on, but our tasks will be much easier if we start saving earlier, where a little bit that we put aside can work for us for longer. Don't get it. Think about an old-timey steam locomotive. As the locomotive is running along, it stops every now and then to reload its wagons of fuel, of coal or wood, as it's going along. But at some point, when it gets to retirement, it's no longer going to be able to refuel. So then the question becomes, how far, how much track can it go on with the fuel that it's already saved up? Oh, and one thing to bear in mind is, because of the increase in the cost of living and healthcare expenses, the track is kind of on an upward incline. Look, now you've got me depressed. This is all going to end badly for us, right? What's a win here? A win is not running out of money while we're still alive. Being poor is a difficult hardship at any time in life. But being impoverished when we're elderly and perhaps in ill health and without any employment is particularly difficult. Okay, I'd like to be a winner, but I don't have any overalls and I'm not an engineer, so how can I possibly compute all these different variables? Life expectancy is quite accurately tabulated in actuarial tables. The costs of health care and costs of living are going up quite dramatically, and those will definitely be difficult to get your hands around, especially decades hence. As far as income goes, of course, that turns on what you're making during your career. Whoa. You'll be able to find lots of retirement calculators that'll help you on the Google. What if my math is off? Oh, it's almost certainly going to be off. The further you are away from retirement, the less this project is about accuracy, and the more it is about good habits. The lesson is, of course, to start saving early. How? Great question. The way in which you save is almost as important as how much you save. How many ways are there to save? You either stick the cash in your coffee can or you tuck it under the mattress. No, please don't do either of those things. You're going to want to save your money in a way that gives your income a boost and reduces the drag on the friction from your earnings. Great. Physics now. Let's start with an important first principle. Unless you put aside almost 100% of what you earn, you'll probably not have enough to cover the average retirement. No, you need to actually save more than you've put aside. What? More than you earned? Either you're talking about stealing or you're violating some law of thermo... nuclear dynamite. I'm talking about using the amounts that you've saved to generate interest and to generate investment returns that'll increase the size of your overall nest egg. If you do this effectively, the amount that you actually put aside will only be a small portion of the total retirement nest egg that you accumulate. What's the drag? The drag comes from taxes. Large amounts of our income are taxed. If we could avoid those taxes, we'd have more to save. And of course, if we have more to save, then we'll be able to generate higher amounts of interest and higher amounts of return. So overall, if we get rid of the taxes, we'll have a, a much larger nest egg waiting for us at the end. OK, so what do I need to make all this magic happen? We need a special kind of piggy bank that our elected representatives have created for us. You've probably heard of them. They're called individual retirement accounts, sometimes called 401ks or 403bs. The reason they have those numbers in their names is because it refers to the portion of the internal revenue code that created them. And they all generally have similar attributes. The attributes typically say that you can put aside money from your paychecks without having that money taxed, and any earnings are Good bets that you make on your savings in their accounts won't be taxed. They will, however, be taxed much later on when you withdraw those amounts later on for retirement. Wait, wait, wait. They're taxed when I'm taking the money out? Surely that's the last time I want to be taxed. Isn't that worse than taxing me now? No, it's not. The longer you can push off taxes, the better because of the time value of money. And second, if you are taxed on those amounts when you're in retirement, your overall tax bracket might be lower, so the amount of money actually taken from you in the form of taxes will also be lower. Why do you keep saying, I have to do this? Why isn't the government on this? Well, first, it's your retirement, so no one is going to care about it more than you do. And second, the government is in on this. 
a portion of all of your paychecks is set aside for social security taxes. And that amount is accumulated during your lifetime. And when you retire, you're entitled to receive some social security payouts. Problem solved. Well, not quite. First, social security covers only a small portion of the average person's retirement costs. And second, Social Security will soon be paying out more than it takes in, which means that the fund can't be around forever. Then why isn't some competent private sector company solving this? Private companies and public sector governments did take care of this. They paid their employees pensions. Pensions are defined benefit programs, and what we talked about earlier, 401ks and IRAs, are defined contribution programs. And the difference is key. In both programs, a small portion of your paycheck is set aside and designed to be there for your retirement. But with a defined benefit program, a pension, the employer manages those savings and is responsible for making good on all the payments for the rest of your life after you retire. In a 401k, you're responsible for managing the investments, and you're also responsible for making up any difference if there's not enough in that program to cover your retirement costs. Why don't employers still do this? Because the longer you live, the more expensive it is to pay out an annuity for the rest of your life. By getting rid of pensions, employers can put the burden and the onus more on individual employees to cover their expenses for the rest of their life. Almost all employers, both private and public state employers, are phasing out defined benefit programs in favor of these defined contribution programs, which means that more and more individual Americans are going to have to fend for themselves in preparing for their retirement. Look, I think I get the gist. I'm on it. I'll take care of it. I hope so. But the fact is, most Americans aren't very good at this. They either don't put enough aside to begin with, or they don't invest what they have put aside very wisely. Well, how should I invest wisely? Your first guiding principle should be that it's incredibly difficult to beat the market consistently for a long period of time. Bummer, but I love day trading. I got the best PJs. On the other hand, the overall US market has done very well over prolonged periods of time. So you're probably better off trying to match the market than you are picking individual winners and losers. The entire market? That's a lot of trades. Well, it isn't necessarily if you use broad-based, passively managed index mutual funds. And if you adjust the balance of those funds to become more and more conservative as you get closer and closer to retirement. What if I don't want to do anything? Well, in that case, you can use life cycle funds. Life cycle funds are often broad-based, passively managed index mutual funds, but they automatically adjust the balance, that is the risk and the reward portfolio, to make it more and more conservative as you approach a target retirement date. Perfect. No, it's not necessarily perfect. The glide paths of a lot of target date funds remain quite aggressive, even quite close to retirement, because the longer people live in retirement, the more money they need to accumulate before they stop working. What that means is if the market fails very close to your retirement, you could lose a big chunk of your savings right there on the eve of your retirement. Man, this is garbage. What if I don't want all this uncertainty? Well, in that case, you can purchase an annuity. An annuity, again, is a stream of payments that you receive for the rest of your life. And effectively, you could convert a defined contribution plan into a defined benefit plan by using the amount that you've saved yourself to buy the stream of payments from someone else. But of course, those payments are often quite expensive. And annuities probably make the most sense for people with less wealthy retirement plans. OK. Well, this has been a little exhausting. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to retire. A little early. I doubt it.